Um, this this artist is a great personal friend of mine, but also they're gonna give you an experience, right? I was asking this artist, okay, what do I define you as? He was like, I cannot be defined. You feel me? And that is just a, a smidgen of who this person is, right? So I want you to really fall into it. They are a part of an organization called the Neo Futurists. Anybody heard of Neo Futurists? All right. Don't, all right, if you have it, then don't lie. <laughs> uh, but the fuck? Uh, <laughs> that was weird. But uh, the, it's an organization, and they do a weekly show called The Infinite Wrench, which is absolutely amazing. And this person is absolutely amazing. They are brilliant, they are kind, they are giving, and they are such a blessing to my life, and they're gonna be such a blessing to your life as well. So a big round of applause for my friend, Anuj. Um, I'm gonna start this off with a few things. First of all, the theme of the night, what keeps you going? So, um, my, my family um, belongs to a um, mystic philosophy, um, which is like maybe another word for religion. My family debates it. Um, but um, a mystic philosophy, like a mystic spirituality, is really this idea that like good goodness is like an outward projection of whatever is happening on the inside, right? And so like growing up with conversation around like ancestry and carrying it with you was just like ingrained in my familial culture, right? And I think I'm at this really interesting point where I'm always thinking like how much for that of me is like authentic connection versus like this really intense want to just belong. Um, and so as I like continue to explore that, one of my favorite things to explore um, is the queerness, of course. Um, but particularly, like there's there's like a timeline of all of our lives of like when we named our queerness. But I like looking before that and like looking at myself as a child and being like before I named myself as queer, I was still a queer child, and that to me is pretty cool. Um, so I uh, I did this thing where. Um, I told myself that I would stop putting out disclaimers about the art that I make, um, but I replaced it with doing this thing called truths, and so it's basically the same thing as disclaimers. Um, so, to give to give a few of those, um, the conversation with me and Tim about like what this is, I currently have juice in my hand. Um, I used to do a lot of poetry, and then I started performing more with the neo futurists, and now I'm just doing regular theater stuff, and so this like little art transformation has happened. And so the process of making this went a little like this. I took the theme, I sat down, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna write a poem. And then like time passed, and I was like, fuck, I wrote an essay. Um, and then I was like, okay, but theater, you just had a task. And so my task is drinking this juice. So that's truth number one. Truth number two is that I'm using a lot of words. I told myself I wouldn't do this anymore, so if you see me performing again and I'm just talking, I give you full freedom to tell me to stop. Um, and number three is that this isn't memorized. I used to check out the Animorph books from my elementary school library. My teachers would always tell me what a quick reader I was because of how fast I would put one down and pick another one up. But in full transparency to each and every one of you right here, I never read the books. You see, I would use, I would use the covers to jumpstart my imagination. I would see the merging of the two-legged with the four-legged, and I would imagine myself, I would imagine that for myself. And just like that, I would transform into anything that I dreamt in the confines of my parents' house. I called my parents this week and said, I want to go to India for six months. And they asked, how did this suddenly come to mind? And I said, I feel like I'm not getting any younger. Oops, my phone stopped. Um, and I said, I, I feel like I'm not getting any younger. And they said, why do you want to go? And I said, I talk about Hindi as some faraway impossibility when all I need to do is learn it. And they said, well, what if you just come back to Cleve Cleveland instead? And I said, I'm never doing that again. And they asked, 
and they asked, what about us? And I said, I can talk to you on the phone. And they said, well, what will you do to support yourself while you're there? And I lied and said, I have a lot of skills. I'll find something to do from afar. And they asked, but who will you stay with when you go? And I said, I thought this was supposed to be our home. And they said, it's harder than that. And I asked, can you send pictures of the dog? Which is really code for me wanting to yell at them, but you chose to leave, which is really code for them saying, if only you understood. <laughs> My queerness, and I'm guessing that a lot of our queerness, has been largely defined through a process of undoing guilt. Guilt of being constantly told where not to be and who not to be. Without being, this is like the essay part, sorry. Without being given much, much information about where to go and who to be. Taking moments where I felt like somebody denied me my right to be supernatural and recycling those emotions through my body rather than discarding them in a continual attempt to reach the effervescence that I carried as an eight-year-old running through my house. The summer after I finished elementary school, I remember playing Animorphs at my friend's house. I chose to be the character of Cassie, if any of you know who that is. And I still remember the, the point in the game where I transformed into an animal. I remember looking at the ground below me moving faster, opening my mouth more and more to entertain any sound that came out, in loud, and speaking in loud whispers as if we were on a mission. Our game was cut short when said friend's mom pulled him aside to give him a message that she thought was vitally important, that I would certainly be going to hell if I continued to pretend to be a girl. The ability to float within my own skin rarely diminished as a child because of what my parents did to me, but rather because of the way I saw other adults try to micromanage, dictate, and set boundaries on who they were raising me to be. I can't ignore the undeniable fact that I, as I undo my own feelings of what I've only been able to name as queer guilt, I'm probably holding my parents accountable to an unfair role of trying to piece back together the parts of me that I feel anger for not being able to understand. In do I'm doing this, sorry, it's a juice. In doing this, I can't help but wonder if I'm forcing them to undergo similar feelings as the countless adults who tried to reduce my magic as a child. And some days I wish we could undo it all. I called my parents this week and asked, can you send pictures of the dog? And it's harder than that, they said. And I said, I thought it was supposed to be home. And they asked, but who will you stay with when you go? And I said, I'll find something to do from afar. I have a lot of skills. And they asked, what will you do to support yourself while you're there? And I said, I can talk to you on the phone. And they asked, what about us? And I said, I'm never doing that again. And they asked, what if you just come back to Cleveland instead? And I said, I talk about Hindi as some faraway impossibility when all I need to do is learn it. And they said, why do you want to go? And I said, I feel like I'm not getting any younger. And they asked, how did this suddenly come to mind? And I said, I want to go to India for six months, which was really code for me saying, you both can't make me love myself, which was really code for them saying, a place can't do that either. <laughs> there is a word in the classical Indian arts for the divine relationship intended to be built between artist and audience. We call this divinity ras, or as it translates from Sanskrit to English, juice. Every time I face the fear of exploiting my parents through the words I speak, it's as though I swallow a part of my own divinity. I don't think thankful is the right word to, be, to describe having to go through the everyday process of being told that you aren't an amorphous superhuman, but I promise you all that it's given me all the motivation in the world to show you that I am one. And I can only hope that I remember a little bit more each day as, the, as to who my bloodlines came from as I go through that process. Thank you.